what this song is. When I listen to it, something in me starts to move. I know many people hear it and they want to just get into a, a line with people. They want to be with thousands or tens of thousands and march on Washington. And yet most of the people that you look around yourself and see don't know what the song is. They don't know what the Battle Hymn of the Republic is. They have no connection to the nation. They have no connection to the music of the nation. They have no connection to the language of the nation. They have no connection to the borders of the nation. They have no connection to the culture of the nation. You get it? Take a look. Go look at your cab driver. Go go look around. Look at your country. Is it your country? I was watching National Geographic last night with the, the great brainwashing, how we all descend from a, a woman and a man in Africa. Now, that happens to be a theory, by the way. It's not a proven fact. But on and on and on, National Geographic went on and on, how everyone on earth descends from two people in Africa. I was astounded at the simple message that they were putting out. They'd gone back to the two people in Africa about 50 times in the first half an hour. No matter who you were, uh, an Eskimo, an Inuit, a blonde Norwegian, an Indonesian, a Thai, an Ashkenazi Jew, a Sephardic Jew, a Turk, you all came from Africa. Now, I grew up having learned that mankind originated in the area known as uh, the Levant, which would be Iraq, the cradle of civilization. That's what we were taught. But then again, we had not yet uh, achieved the status of knowledge that we have today with microgenetics, so they say. I said, there's something wrong with this picture, because common sense would dictate that this is not true. Just common sense. So I did some research last night, and guess what I found out? Yeah, maybe that 98% of all scientists agree we descended from two people in Africa. Well, 98% of government scientists agree that man is destroying the earth with global warming. But I'm, I'm interested in the 2%, the outliers who don't agree with that theory of global warming. I'm interested in all the evidence. There was a time that 99% of all the people on earth in the established circles of the world at the time said that the uh, sun moved around the earth. And anyone who said otherwise was uh, punished quite severely, the same way that the uh, global warmest want to punish those who want to present other evidence. Well, I researched it just quickly. I googled it. Other theories other than uh, uh, man originated in Africa, there are quite a few people who don't agree with it in science. And what, should they be hung? Should they, they be fired? Should they be thrown out of academia? Should their evidence be destroyed? Should the human skulls that were found that disprove this theory be smashed into fragments and thrown into the East River because it doesn't fit the current dialogue? This is exactly what I'm trying to tell you. We're never, we've never lived in a time like this in modern time. Oh, yeah. Hey, 1500s, for sure we lived like this. But under Obama, he's taken us back 500 years in terms of the critical mind. 500 years he's taken us back to not questioning authority. 500 years he wants us to believe that whatever he says comes out of his mouth is true. Then he had the Pope come up here, come around the world, do the Pope's world tour, the equivalent of the Rolling Stone tour, the Pope's world tour on global warming and global income uh, inequality, the Pope's grand liberal communist tour. There's a chapter in my book entitled Zero Religion, Lenin's Pope. But the better chapter is Zero Science on page 226. Boy, would I love to read this to you. God, I would love to read it to you. And I think I should read a page or two for you to see how good this stuff is. I want you to see how scholarly my books are. If you think that it's just right-wing crap, written by a knuckle-dragging conservative. No one on the left has matched me. Nobody ever has matched me in output or in quality. And for those of you who are doubting Thomas's, why don't you give yourself a break and read it? Read it for free like you do when you go into Barnes & Noble. You pay for nothing anyway. I see all your liberals ruining the magazines and books. All of you wonderful liberals. No wonder you drove borders out of business. You go there and sit there and thumb every magazine, 30 books. You spill coffee on it, and then you leave. You don't buy anything. No wonder they went out of business. You, to you, everything's a public library. There's no such thing as free enterprise to a liberal. They go into Barnes & Noble, they sit there and thumb the magazines, they leave them on a table with crumbs in it. I don't even think that they bought the cookie there. They probably bought it somewhere else and dribbled the cookie crumbs onto the magazine. Why don't you go read the book for free if you're too cheap to actually buy it? All you good, smart, superior leftists. 
and see if you can match the horsepower of Michael Savage. I doubt it. Earlier this year, a study by Germany's Max Planck Institute for Meteorology dealt with American climate scientists Pat Michaels and Chip Knappenberger called a death blow to global warming hysteria. The study proves what any real scientist already knew. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC models, that predict significant warming with increases in atmospheric carbon dioxide are wrong. Nevertheless, the Presidente continues to pursue his climate change action plan with strong support from progressives, including the Pope, who use this imaginary crisis to pursue their all-out attack on private property and free enterprise. Well, I can read the rest of the chapter to you. I'd rather you read it yourself. But where I go from there is on page 227, where I talk about how science has been hijacked. And I talk about Lysenkoism then and now. Now, those of you who have any scientific background understand who Lysenko is. I'm one of the few people who go back far enough. I remember hearing about Lysenko. God, it was in the early 50s. Remember, I got my bachelor's degree. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm not sorry. It is what it is. I can't be sorry to say it. I got my bachelor's degree in 1963. I entered college in 1959. And so Lysenko was still operational when I was learning biology. And Lysenkoism was taught to us as an example of what Soviet, the Soviets had done to scientists. And I woke up one day and I said, holy God, what Stalin did to scientists, Obama's done to scientists in our time. Read about it in Government Zero. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. And hour number two comes to a close, and I know several affiliates leave me at this point, unfortunately for me and them. I want to say this. If you do buy my book, Government Zero, tomorrow in a bookstore, and it'll be everywhere on every octagon table in Barnes & Noble, it's going to be big. If you buy it, please buy it in the next few days. Octagon table, front of BNN. And by the way, I want you to report back to me if it's not there, the name of the store. It will be in Walmart, Sam's, Costco, Books A Million, and of course online at Amazon. And at uh, most independent bookstores, except the most liberal ones especially in my hometown, which don't carry my works. Uh, you will learn new facts from the book, which you can use to defeat the liberal agenda when speaking with neighbors. Most of them are nice people, by the way. That's why they're called neighbors. They're not your enemies. They're just ignorant of what's actually going on around them. And I'm trying to arm you with the verbal information to change the course of human events. It's been wonderful being with you these two hours across America on over 200 stations. There's another huge hour on the Savage Nation. I'll take your calls. I'll give you all the breaking news, including war with China. Oh, yes. Barry from Honolulu has threatened war with Russia. And now he sent a destroyer to China to threaten them. What a saber rattling that is. That's like taking out a pocket knife in a gun battle. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Blue Monday, I'm a blue Monday. Got to work, like a slave all day. Here come Tuesday. Yeah, here come Tuesday. <laughs> But today is still Monday on the Savage Nation. We have another big hour here, and this is the caller hour and the news hour. And it's 855-407-282. If you get a call the program, you'll probably be heard by more people than you've met in your entire life. It's a pretty awesome concept, but that's the truth. In, every, in any 15 minutes on this show, I want you to envision the largest football stadium in America. And then I want you to env envision that crowd and triple it. That's approximately 
the number of people who are listening at, at any time during the week to this show. Now, it sounds intimidating, and it is if you try to imagine each and every one of them as listening to you personally, but they're listening to you collectively. And collectively is what we're talking about, the mass mind, mass media. Barack Obama is the most brilliant user of the mass media in the history of America. Look what he's done to this country. Do you know that a foreigner who invaded the country could not get away with as much damage as he's inflicted on the nation's institutions as he has without firing a shot? Think about how brilliant he really is. But then again, when you have people like Jake uh, Woodpecker on your side and all of the other minions, the entire Fox News channel on your side while pretending they're not, it's kind of easy to get by with a little help from your friends. It's even easier to get high with a little help from your friends. The Beatles told us this day would come. And if you want to make an omelet, you've got to break a few eggs. Karl Marx taught that to all the leftists. And unfortunately, America is one of those eggs that needs to be cracked into the omelet called the New World Order. Look at what Merkel's doing to Germany. Take a look at the pictures. Miles, miles, miles of immigrants marching into Germany like army ants, like hungry army ants getting ready to devour the nest. Now, you'd say, where's the military? Why isn't the military being put on the borders with Germany to stop the invasion? Well, that requires a general, a leader, a commander-in-chief who, A, sees the invasion and is willing to stop it. But they have no one stopping it. In fact, the exact opposite is the truth. Merkel is actually leading the invasion of her own nation, as has Barry done ever, ever since he was put into power. No, oh, what do you think that surge was last summer? Those poor women from El Salvador and Honduras with their babies. You think that wasn't an invasion? Now, we're told by Zuckerberg and all the other greedy SOBs in the American industrial uh, government complex that they all come here to work, that all immigrants come here to work. Really, you're telling me there's child labor in America and all those little children that came in on the trains last summer or two summers ago are now working in a factory somewhere? I hope not. I don't believe in child labor, do you? So obviously they're not working and their mommies are not working. Mommy is enjoying a nice, clean room, a nice, clean pair of clothes, three good meals, lawyers, doctors, everything she needs. And if you so much as utter a complaint, you're the racist, right? Wrong. Wrong. Well, you get the picture. Borders, language, culture. Welcome to our number three. Let's take some callers. WABC Donald, welcome to the program. Fire away. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Thank you for taking my call. I have to tell you, you have uh, some e enormous sensitivity coupled with a childlike faith. Now, you said in the last hour that uh, you, you have come to the microphone because God has enabled you to do that. I'm here to confirm that that's the truth, number one. Number two, you uh, spoke about your mother and what she said to you, how you went from one thing to the next as a child and uh, that's curiosity my friend I'm a school teacher in Newtown Connecticut and I can tell you you've maintained that uh, into your uh, later adult years so I want to encourage you to maintain your courage and I want to encourage all the listeners those that are driving in their automobiles those that are hearing me speak which I'm very grateful to do I want to, I want to encourage everyone to face that fork in the road and face that inner sense of what's right and true and take the proper path. And oftentimes that's a lonely path. It's a painful path. You remind me a little bit of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. I'm sure you know who he is in uh, uh, Nazi Germany. It's a very tough road, but people have to stand up. And I'm doing that now. It takes courage for me to make this call. In front of it. Yes, it, and I, 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 first of all, I'm, I'm spellbound by your, your um, monologue. It's beautifully put, naturally. It's complimentary, so I appreciate it doubly. But you said certain things that I would like to respond to, the, the issue of being childlike in almost my naivete and my belief. I think that's what you're implying. I'd like to respond to that. I would also like to offer you a free copy of a Government Zero, which we'll send out to you. But more than that, People ask me, aren't you afraid to speak out so boldly? And you know what my answer is? 